Texas Tech University is committed to the highest standards of excellence in education, innovative research, and service to the community. Our employees range from faculty educating our students in classrooms, staff and students conducting research in laboratories, and administrative and facility staff ensuring daily operations at the university run smoothly. With so many jobs come numerous work processes and the opportunity for potential injury if hazards are not recognized and managed appropriately. The university is committed to providing a safe and healthy work environment for all and everyone has a role to play to ensure the safety of our community. At Texas Tech, hazards can range from chemicals and biological agents used in a research lab to hazards presented by saws and drills in a shop. As an employee, you have the right to know what hazards are present in your work environment and how to protect yourself against them. Whether you work in a lab, in a shop or studio, out in the environment, or in an office, there's safety and health information you need to know. Protecting Our People The university's occupational safety program covers a wide variety of issues, including, but not limited to, respirator selection, ergonomics, hazardous noise, shop safety, working in confined spaces, crane safety, electrical safety, and forklift operation, to name a few. Use of personal protective equipment, or PPE, like gloves and face protection, is required if your job has hazards that can't be engineered out or varied by administrative action to eliminate the hazard. Your department's responsible for furnishing required PPE to you at no cost. Texas Tech Environmental Health and Safety can help you in selection of appropriate PPE when needed. Maintaining a healthy work environment for employees embraces responding to indoor air quality complaints. Indoor air quality can be detrimental to health if certain substances are present, including airborne bacteria, viruses or mold, volatile compounds from cleaning products or paint, asthma or allergy triggers, or sick building syndrome. Environmental health and safety personnel work with building occupants and maintenance personnel to address issues. Poor indoor air quality can potentially cause irritation of the eyes, nose and throat, headaches, dizziness or fatigue while in your work area. Additionally, if you are involved with or affected by any renovation, maintenance, upgrade or self-help project, you can ask the supervisor or project manager to discuss any hazardous materials that might be disturbed or introduced during work. Of particular note is asbestos, a naturally occurring mineral fiber that's contained in many building materials such as insulation, fireproofing, floor tile, caulks, and adhesives found within campus buildings. Exposure to airborne asbestos fibers has been linked to various diseases, including certain cancers. Asbestos surveys from Texas Tech University Engineering Services are a federal and state requirement that must be completed prior to any disturbance or potential disturbance of university building materials. The information within these surveys will identify asbestos-containing materials within the project and provide a work plan to remediate the asbestos safely. The university also provides a program to ensure public health through proper food safety, public drinking water quality, and overseeing swimming pool safety. This program requires temporary food permits for any person, vendor, or organization to operate a temporary food service operation or mobile unit on Texas Tech property, regardless if it's for free or for sale. Applications must be submitted to Environmental Health and Safety and the Campus Life Grounds Use Committee prior to public events for review and approval. A permit isn't required if an individual department is having a luncheon for their employees only. Your contribution to workplace safety also takes place in your day-to-day -day routines. Don't use inappropriate items to reach high up places, including chairs or countertops. Always use a step stool or ladder when reaching high places. Add a securing rope when needed. Fill filing cabinets starting from the lowest drawers to prevent tipping and potential injury.
And if you ever see something that doesn't feel safe, report it through the Environmental Health and Safety website at www.ehs.ttu.edu. Research Safety Programs Research at Texas Tech University is cutting edge and often inherently involves hazards. Recognizing these hazards and taking the appropriate safety precautions is fundamental to ensure a safe environment. The laboratory safety program at Texas Tech is maintained through cooperation between laboratory researchers and environmental health and safety personnel. The program consists of three components. Training of personnel in safe work practices and hazard recognition. Annual surveys of laboratory work areas to identify safety departures in facilities and work practices and collaboration between environmental health and safety and building maintenance to assure engineered facility safety controls are installed and maintained properly. Chemical safety. The chemical safety program at Texas Tech is maintained through the development of a chemical hygiene plan by the university. The requirements of this plan ensure protection for the worker from the physical and health hazards of chemicals and other hazards in the university's teaching and research spaces. This plan can be found on the Environmental Health and Safety website and is reviewed regularly by a committee of faculty, staff, and environmental health and safety personnel. Hazard communication is also implemented to ensure that all personnel within occupational work areas, including custodial and maintenance operations, are well versed in the hazards presented by chemicals in these areas. Radiation, Laser, and Magnetic Field Safety Radiation safety, laser safety, and magnetic field safety are overseen by the Environmental Health and Safety Radiation Safety Program. Each program involves safety training for personnel, the establishment of safe work procedures including proper PPE usage, and scheduled surveys of the work areas containing the equipment or materials by Environmental Health and Safety to assure adherence to university and government regulations. Radiation safety also handles disposal of all radioactive waste produced on campus and provides personal exposure monitoring where required. Material shipping. In the process of collaboration with other institutions, it's sometimes necessary to ship hazardous materials. Personnel who will be shipping chemicals or biological materials must be trained in Department of Transportation or DOT hazardous materials shipping regulations. Hazardous materials shipping training is offered online for free through EHNS and will fulfill the DOT requirements. Training must be completed prior to shipment. Failure to complete this training and shipment of any hazardous material can result in significant fines and or imprisonment as federal agencies closely monitor shipments by air and ground and only authorized trained personnel are allowed to sign shipping papers. All shipments must be sent through MailTech. Shippers must complete and submit the hazardous material shipping declaration form two business days prior to shipment. Worker training. Various training programs are available from environmental health and safety to address the hazards faced in our research laboratories and other work areas. Your supervisor will ensure you're enrolled in the required trainings for your work duties. Keep in mind the provided trainings deliver awareness level education, and you should be provided on-site training on work area specific procedures from your supervisor. Protecting our environment. Environmental health and safety is responsible for maintaining an environmentally conscious program committed to the management of all hazardous materials used at university facilities. This includes educating employees in safe chemical practices, including labeling, handling, storage, transport, and storage and disposal. Protection of the air, land, and water from pollutants is accomplished through collection of hazardous wastes, stormwater runoff monitoring, and air emissions permitting. All persons within departments that generate, store, handle, or accumulate hazardous wastes are responsible for proper handling and management of wastes in their area and for ensuring that university waste guidelines are adhered to.
Activities directed by provisions enforced by the Environmental Protection Agency and the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality include hazardous waste produced in laboratories or industrial processes on campus, construction projects on campus, mobile car washing on campus, trash collection, pesticide or fertilizer applications, wastewater disposal, and air emissions. Even office items such as printer cartridges, light bulbs, paint, and batteries shouldn't be disposed of in the regular garbage and must be picked up and disposed of appropriately through environmental health and safety. Personnel needing to dispose of hazardous waste must submit a waste request through the Environmental Health and Safety website to have chemical, biological, radioactive, and universal waste picked up by environmental health and safety personnel. Requests are put in a queue and picked up in order of submission. Waste that pose a greater hazard, like explosive chemical waste, will be prioritized over those with lesser hazard, such as universal waste. The waste must be appropriately packaged and labeled prior to pickup, and instructions for packaging and labeling the waste can be found on the Environmental Health and Safety website. Preparing for emergencies. The university also places value in preparedness. Incidents can happen at any time, and planning is the best defense to ensure the safety of all. Emergency Action Plans, or EAPs, are developed across campus and provide guidance on what actions to take in the event of fire, tornado, active shooter situations, and power outages, among other incidents. Your department's Emergency Response Coordinator can provide you with this information. Tornado Safety with spring on the South Plains comes the threat of tornadoes. To ensure your personal safety, members of the Texas Tech community should acquaint themselves with a few terms and precautions. A tornado watch means conditions are such to develop a tornado. A watch is issued to alert you to the possibility of the development of conditions favorable to tornadic activity. Monitor radio or TV stations to obtain continuous weather advisories. Be prepared to take cover if the weather develops into an active tornado. A tornado warning means a tornado has been sighted visually or by weather radar. The tornado warning signal on campus will sound as a steady, high-pitched siren from selected campus buildings. The sirens are augmented by police car sirens and by radio and television announcements. Calmly make your way to the pre-established safe shelter area in your building according to your department or building's emergency action plan. Fire safety. Fire safety on campus includes fire protection systems and fire extinguishers located in every building on campus, annual surveys of campus buildings to identify potential fire hazards, and fire drills throughout the year to practice evacuation routes. Remember, you're never required to use a fire extinguisher unless you feel safe and comfortable doing so. The most important aspect of fire safety is knowing when to evacuate. Fire extinguisher training will be provided upon request for university departments. Extinguishers should be used according to the acronym PASS, pull pin, aim hose, squeeze handle, sweep at base of fire. If there's a fire in your building, exit the building in an organized manner and pull the closest fire alarm station to the exit door. Go immediately to your designated meeting place to account for all individuals. When should environmental health and safety respond and how do I report incidents? Major incidents require assistance from outside the work area to manage. Examples include serious injury, unmanageable hazardous material spills, or the environmental release of any hazardous material. If someone is seriously injured, call 911 immediately followed by Environmental Health and Safety at 742-3876 during normal business hours or 742-4677 after hours. If an environmental health and safety response is required, environmental health and safety personnel will take control of the incident scene once on site and coordinate with emergency responders. In the event of emergency, Take direction from the authority on site, including any emergency personnel or environmental health and safety personnel. If you were in the area at the time of the incident, relay any pertinent information to responders. If you become aware of an incident, don't enter the area unless you're trained to respond appropriately. 
Minor incidents are contained within the work area and don't require assistance from outside the area. Examples include manageable chemical spills, needle sticks, and other minor injuries. Minor incidents only require the appropriate report to be filed. Reporting. Major or minor incidents that result in any type of injury to personnel, including but not limited to needle sticks, cuts, chemical exposure, or major property damage are required to be reported to Environmental Health and Safety via the appropriate incident report form located on the Environmental Health and Safety website. There's a form for students or visitors and a separate form for employees. Incident reports for students or visitors must be submitted to Environmental Health and Safety within 24 hours of the incident. First report of injury, accident, or illness for employees must be submitted to risk management within 24 hours of the incident. The supervisor of the injured individual is required to complete the appropriate form. Questions about the form can be directed to the Office of Risk Management. Safety concern and near-miss scan reporting. Safety concerns, including questionable work practices, facility maintenance issues, or other safety questions, can be addressed through a different reporting mechanism at Texas Tech. Near misses can also be reported through the system. A near miss is a close call or a good catch where no one was injured and property damage did not occur but could have. Some examples of near misses are, a researcher came into a laboratory to find a drying oven was smoking. The researcher unplugged the drying oven and determined that some plastic materials placed inside had begun to melt and smolder because they weren't suitable for the temperature of the oven. A forklift tipped over while carrying a load that shifted during travel over an uneven surface. The driver escaped without injury. The near-miss reporting system at Texas Tech University is called Safety Concerns and Near Misses, or SCANS. Scan submissions are always confidential, so workers should fear no penalty for reporting scans, but they can be submitted anonymously if the submitter wishes to remain unknown. Near-miss reporting is used to prevent incidents before they occur. It's estimated that near-misses outnumber actual incidents two to one. These near-miss occurrences are investigated by environmental health and safety to determine the root cause of the occurrence and recommend alterations to work practices to prevent the event in the future. Scans may be used to improve safety policies, refine training programs, and stop incidents before they occur. Your dedication to safety is crucial to creating a culture of safety, first inside our classrooms, laboratories, shops and studios, and all other university facilities, as well as at events and programs. Safety is everyone's responsibility, and together we can make Texas Tech safe for all employees, students, and visitors. Work smart and always work safely.